Hey there, welcome to Life Noggin. As we blow through the resources on Earth, it's clear that we're going to need a new planet soon. And since there isn't another Earth out there, is it possible we can make one through terraforming? Terraforming is the process of turning a hostile environment into one that can support human life. And a possible place where this could happen is Mars. After all, it's literally right there. And it might be a good replacement for Earth. So what do we have to work with? Well, Mars's atmosphere is really thin, so only about 1% of what we have on Earth. And it's carbon dioxide, so toxic to humans. Mars is also further from the Sun, and that, coupled with its thin atmosphere, means it's about negative 63 degrees Celsius. So sorry folks, your winter coats won't cut it. On top of that, Mars also has no magnetosphere, so no protection against radiation. And it also has about one-third of the gravity we feel on Earth. So clearly there is a lot we need to change. Let's start with the atmosphere. We'd have to make it thicker and change its composition. One way to do this would be to trigger a greenhouse effect, making it so any heat from the sun is trapped, heating the planet all over. We can do this a bunch of different ways, like using methane mined from rocks on Mars, carbon dioxide if we can get enough of it, or even with ammonia. Let's focus on that one for a minute. We could release that ammonia by smashing ice-rich comets from the outer solar system. And since ammonia is mostly nitrogen by weight, once we add oxygen through plant life, we could have an atmosphere pretty similar to Earth's. And with that thicker atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure would be high enough for humans to possibly live. From here, the atmosphere will warm the planet and the rest of the terraforming job will be a relative cakewalk. We can melt Mars's polar ice caps and have water, and with that water we can have the environment for life, make some changes to the Martian soil, and set up shop on the formerly red planet. But wait, there is more. Remember the whole Mars has no magnetosphere thing? Turns out that's a big part of why Mars lost its atmosphere in the first place. Mars's global magnetic field shut down around 4.2 billion years ago, and from there the solar winds and powerful sun explosions stripped away most of the atmosphere, sending it off into space. And that's not good, since that means there isn't a trove of carbon dioxide in the Mars rocks to release in order to trigger a greenhouse effect. And also, any atmosphere we do add on Mars won't last. Eventually, it'll be stripped away by radiation and solar wind too. And whatever wasn't would be hard to hold onto with Mars's weaker gravity. So Mars isn't the best option. Instead, let's check out our other nearest neighbor, Venus. Venus has a super thick atmosphere and temperatures around 460 degrees Celsius, so we'd have to change a lot of that too. One option is to bombard Venus with hydrogen from gas giants, creating graphite and water that would turn into global oceans. These would dissolve produced nitrogen and lower the atmospheric pressure to something more Earth-like. We could also terraform parts of Mercury. There's water and organic molecules in the northern polar region, so heating the bottoms of big craters with mirrors could melt the ice, and adding a dome on top could create a little life bubble on a hostile planet. The same thing could be done on the moon, too. Hopefully that life bubble has Wi-Fi. Wouldn't want you to miss out on life, Noggin. We could maybe terraform Europa? Well, sort of. If we could melt the surface ice, some of the released oxygen could populate the atmosphere, and we could have a water world on our hands, people. And it's even possible to terraform Titan, too. But we would also have to create oxygen and make the moon less toxic to humans. But all of this is really hard, and really far off into the future. While I'd love to call another place in this universe my home, we should probably just protect the Earth we have now. So what do you think? Should we start terraforming other planets? This video was written by Space historian Amy Shira Title. She makes new videos every week on her channel and you have to check them out. There's a link in the description if you're on mobile. Should the United States have been completely blindsided by the launch of Sputnik? Why is it that the Gemini launches look nothing like any of the other launches we're used to seeing? What changes did NASA make to avoid a repeat of Apollo 13's near-fatal disaster? How did these two spacecraft actually dock up to become this one spacecraft? How did NASA get pictures of Neil Armstrong walking down the lunar module's ladder if there was nobody already on the moon to operate the camera. There's a link in the description if you're on mobile. As always, I'm Blacko, this has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.